You might not be getting the most out of your iPad, but we're gonna change that today. In part one, I covered some of my favorite tips to help you get more out of your device, multitask better, be more productive, and save time. My tips in this series are in no particular order, so I'll link to that video at the end of this one. One of the tips I'm going to mention today actually turned Siri from something that I very rarely used to a feature that has been extremely helpful. And another one significantly sped up my typing. The first tip helps me with one of the things I need all the time, and that's to find a word on a web page. I might be doing some research for a video and I'm looking for a specific piece of information about a product. So I have an article in front of me and I'm looking for something very specific and I don't have a keyboard, so I can't use Command F. All I need to do is click on the address bar and then type my keyword there. You'll see that you get Google results first, but below that, you see on this page. It'll show you how many matches there are on the right side. When you click on that line, you'll be taken to the first result and have it highlighted in yellow. At the bottom of the iPad, you'll see the find on page bar where you can arrow up and down for the next and previous results or perform a new search for another word. There is another way to get this feature and that's by clicking on the share icon on the top then selecting find on page. Both methods work great and are extremely useful when you're searching for text on long web pages. Moving on, this next tip is the one that helped really speed up my typing on the iPad when I'm using the on-screen keyboard. If you take a closer look at the keyboard, you'll notice that above each letter or punctuation, there's actually another character in a lighter gray. And you can simply swipe down on the key to get that secondary character. For example, if I wanna add a number, rather than touching and holding the button that switches the keyboard and then dragging to the correct button, which is what I used to do before, that was my previous shortcut, I can just swipe down and get that secondary character. I use this a ton for question and exclamation mark, and it's extremely rare now that I have to switch over to the number and special character keyboard layout. The next tip is something that has been extremely convenient for both my work and everyday use. Long gone are the days of the scanner when I need to digitize a document. And I pretty much always reach for my iPad. All I do is open notes, then click on the camera icon and select scan documents. Then I just point the camera at the document. The iPad usually does an excellent job at identifying the document and then it takes a picture. You can then hit save or go on to the next page for a multi-page document. Once you're finished, you have a saved note that you can email as a PDF. And that brings me to the next related tip, which is signing a document. This is something that I started doing a while ago and it really helped eliminate a lot of the frustrations of having to print, sign, and rescan. There are different ways to do this depending on where the document resides. If it's in files, navigate to the folder where you have it, click on the pencil icon at the top, click the plus icon on the bottom right, and then select signature. If it's your first time, you'll be prompted to add a signature and you can use your finger or the Apple Pencil to add your signature. Once it's on the screen, you can place it where you want and resize it as needed. Once you click off the signature, you can tap on it again if you still need to resize or make some adjustments. The best thing is that now that you added a signature, the next time you go to sign a document, you can just click on the plus icon on the bottom right and select your existing signature. You can also add additional signatures or remove any that you no longer need. If this scan or PDF is in notes, you'll see that when you click on the pencil icon, you don't have a plus icon. So you'll need to click on the ellipsis instead and then select send a copy and then markup. Now you'll have the option to add a signature and you can still use the existing ones that are on file. My favorite interface is Dropbox where I can just open the PDF click on the open with icon and then select add text or signature. I can add a signature the same way, although this app does not share the same stored signatures as files and notes, so I simply created it here once. Again, I can resize and place it where needed. But the reason why I like this interface the best is that I can quickly add today's date, which is what I need pretty much every time I add a signature. The next tip is very useful when I'm writing, using the Apple Pencil, or really any time where I need to undo or redo something. Rather than using the interface in whatever app I'm in, I can just swipe left with three fingers to undo and swipe right to redo. So whether I'm typing a note or drawing a workflow diagram, I can just easily undo something or redo it by swiping. This is most useful on the iPad Pro because the display is so much bigger 
and I don't want to move my hand to where the undo or redo icons are. So this has just become a habit. The next step is a really fun one. And if you've ever been watching a video or a movie and there's a song playing that you can't name, you can just have your iPad do the work for you. To start, go to settings, control center, and then tap the plus icon next to music recognition. Then the next time you need to name a song, just swipe down from the top right to show the control center and then click the music recognition icon and Shazam will go to work and display the information in the notification window at the top of the screen. If you're still with me and have gotten value from this video, give it a thumbs up. It very much helps the video and the channel, and it lets me know what kind of content you like so that I can make more of it. And if you haven't yet, hit the subscribe and notification button. The next tip is a good one if you use group messaging. If you ever wanted to mention a specific person in a message, all you need to do is write your message and include their name. Then tap on their name and you'll see their contact info pop up, click on it, and you're all set. This is particularly important if you have conversations with a lot of people and where there are tons of messages being added quickly. The next tip is useful in many apps that deal with text. If you're typing and using the on-screen keyboard, and want to move the cursor to a specific spot, you can just tap anywhere on the screen, but I usually find that it's harder to see because my finger gets in the way. The option that I use instead is to touch and hold the space bar and then slide my finger to get the cursor exactly where I want it to be. This is extremely helpful when you need to be precise and when you want the cursor in the middle of a word. Now moving on, I've got another tip that I use on a daily basis and that's to quickly copy and paste text and images. Let's say that I'm working in split view and I wanna copy and paste from one app to another, for example, from Safari to Notes. I just highlight the text on the app, touch and hold, and then drag it to the Notes app. And this doesn't only work with text, so if I see an image that I wanna save, I again touch and hold and then drag and drop it into notes. This speeds up my workflow so much and is one of my favorite tips. Next, I wanna show you how to customize Siri suggestions to make it work exactly how you want. And this is particularly important if you find that you're getting results from apps that aren't useful or you find that Siri is adding apps that you don't want it to suggest to your suggested widget. So this is what you do. Start out by going to settings, Siri and search, and then scroll to the bottom. Let's say for example that you don't want map results from Siri. Find maps and then click on it, then go to the on home screen section. You can see disable show suggestions from app. If you don't want it included in a Siri suggested widget, then you can just disable it by toggling suggest app. I mostly use this to re-enable an app if I removed it from the home screen because I can actually remove it directly from that widget by touching and holding down on the app icon and then selecting don't suggest. Once I did this and narrowed down the list of apps that Siri uses, so many features have become significantly more valuable. Hopefully you learned some useful new iPad tips. Click on my face to subscribe and then watch part one of this series for even more iPad tips. You know what I always say? Buy it nice or buy it twice. Good luck and see you soon.